This man was a guiding voice behind one of our most famous meme clips. And after I startled him at Computex by sneaking up in my trade show disguise... The <laughs> yeah, serious, <huh? laughs> hey, yeah. We got to talking about problems with power delivery in modern computers. This is Aris from Hardware Busters, or Cybernetics, and he is trying to change the way device power is tested. We've been working with Aris secretly for years now, but also publicly, because our 80 plus problems video, where we detail all of the many limitations of the 80 plus certification, also showed Cybernetics, which is Aris his company. That's the certification process he pioneered so that power supplies get tested not just for their efficiency with four points on a curve, but also for their safety. In this interview, we learn about a special testing device that he built to analyze every aspect of power that goes into a system. That means not just the average power consumption of a component, but the transients and the spikes as well. But the journey hasn't been easy for him, as NVIDIA has cut into some of his business with strategically limited testing devices. And actually, NVIDIA bought one. Okay. Of the first Powernetics. Okay, they paid for my system, but I helped them to make yeah. it, to build it, and then suddenly they, they stopped responding. Aris's testing device is called the PMD, or Power Measurement Device, and it's built to take power input for the GPU, the CPU, and the motherboard, and act as an intermediary. It sits between the power supply and the components so that it can capture and measure every aspect of power consumption by hardware. And although this is a device meant for reviewers like GN, and we have one now, his goals with it are straightforward. The reason I started all that is to protect consumers. Yeah. Because PSUs can be a fire hazard, you know, you know that already. Yeah. And who have an obligation to protect all those who don't know. We'll talk with Aris about the power measurement device and how GN can use it to further advance its power testing of GPUs, CPUs, and motherboards. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and the CryoSheet graphene pads. These CryoSheets are molecularly stacked in the Z-axis to encourage vertical direct thermal transfer from the IHS to the cooler. CryoSheet pads are made to be easily applicable for a thermal interface and completely avoid paste dryout because it's not paste. It makes them particularly useful for long service life systems with minimal maintenance. They come in multiple sizes for suitability on the most common laptops and desktop CPUs, and you can learn more at the Thermal Grizzly cryo sheets at the link in the description below. Measuring GPU power consumption as a reviewer, a couple challenges. One of them is uh, if you want to measure transients, which are a huge part of the story that's rarely told, then you basically need an oscilloscope uh, because if a lot of reviewers are equipped with NVIDIA's, I don't know if they call it PCAT or PDAT. PCAT. 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 Yeah. So NVIDIA has this PCAT where it's a, a PCIe riser. It measures the power into the riser. And then they also use a, a board in between kind of like this, but much less sophisticated, that can read the PCIe power consumption in out to the GPU. The problem with NVIDIA's, and I think this was strategic, yeah. is it is not fast enough to read transients. Only 10 readings per second. And I don't know if you're, you probably remember better than me, but that they gave that to reviewers around when the 30 series uh, had major transient problems. You know, so, the, a fun fact, uh, the first Powernetics, we introduced the first Powernetics one year before uh, NVIDIA, the least pick out. And actually NVIDIA bought one okay. of the first Powernetics. Uh, so I was talking with the team that developed Picard. Yeah. And once they made Picard, I told them, hey guys, I emailed them, can you send one to me? I will pay for that, of course. Right. They never sent anything to me. Interesting. Well, I uh, wanted to take a look and see what did yeah. they did. Uh, Do you need one? It, currently, no, I have this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it, you know, it felt weird because I helped them. I yeah. gave them my, okay, they paid for my system, but I helped them to make yeah. it, to build it, and then suddenly they, they stopped responding. Manufacturer provided tools for testing, I've always been mixed on. They can be very useful, but the review outlet or the reviewer needs to do validation to make sure, one, it represents every product equally. Yeah. And in NVIDIA's case, they are fair. They don't do any weird math for AMDs, GPUs, or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, two, that it represents the full picture, and it never will, because although PCAT is very useful, and we actually do use it for baseline numbers a lot of the time, 
uh, we have to do separate testing for transients. Yeah. Whereas with the cybernetic solution, it sounds like we'd have much better resolution to the per millisecond yeah. data. And above all, you will have uh, exa at exact the same time sync, voltage, and amperage. So you can easily find out mm. the power. And you also have EMI. Uh, clamps from the scopes pick EMI, lots mm. of EMI. And especially if it's close to the GPU and the MOSFETs of the VRMs, you can have a hell of EMI. So right. for me, from the start, I said no. I don't want this solution, I want sand resistors. This is the way to go. I've been building loaders and stuff like that for almost 15 years now, and this is the way to do it. I've yeah. never used clamps. Also, it's a third party that doesn't make GPUs or CPUs, which is always preferred for testing tools. So cybernetics, that is. So that's, yeah. that's important too. So uh, walk me through physically layout here, I see 20, so you've got duplicates on each side. Yeah. So I guess, is this in and this is out? Yeah. Okay. And then can you, uh, for the test platform, I'll, I'll go ahead and name them. We're at the A data booth, so XPG has this set up. And A data's got 44090 set up to a system. Cybernetics is sitting between everything, I guess. Yeah, yeah. This both supports both ATX uh, 12 volt PSUs and ATX 12 volt only. So we have the 24 pin connector here, the 10 pin connector, uh -huh. three PS, two high power connectors, 16 pin. Right. And three PCI Express, plain, six plus two. Plus. Okay. So it can cover everything. Of course, uh, XPG went over the limit. All out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about, uh, what's the switch over here? Uh, the switch is to reset the system. If something okay. goes wrong, uh, I've noticed that once a month, uh, once a week, uh, very sure. early, uh, the system can hang. Okay. So I asked and uh, put this reset switch. If everything goes out of the line, it doesn't affect the system. It's only, only for the PCB. Okay. If you don't see any readings here, for example, and stuff, you press that and... That's cool. It's okay. Yeah. Um, how about, uh, like, this header here? Is this is to update the firmware. Okay. Uh, this is a lab tool. This is not a toy. Right. This is why it's priced uh, high enough, I would so say. We, yeah, I want to bring that up too. So, um, testing equipment, when it's proper, is not cheap. You told me the price though, and I thought it... 975 euros. So, yeah, and so, as a consumer, like, it's not built for that. But the reason we do the video is because I want to start using this system to improve our testing on power for GPUs. It's something we've been working towards. We've done transients, but the problem that Eris has brought up is that doing a multimeter plus an oscilloscope for every card becomes very cumbersome. Mm, That's a yeah. big time challenge. So having something that can read both without being as ineffective as PCAT is, is important for reviewers, and that's why we want to introduce it to you all, even though it's not a consumer product. Yeah. That said, thousand dollars, I will take two, because <laughs> <laughs> okay. pricing on test equipment is always very high. So yeah. Yeah. on the software side, this is a massive component of this. Yeah, Can and you... the software is the plays the major role here because let's face it, without the software, this is nothing. Sure. Yeah, and since we're building software for power testing. Uh, the software that we use in the lab, in cybernetics, is all custom-made. Mm. I made that. I don't use the crappy Chroma software. Sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I made it as what the viewer wants to see. Yeah. This is a pro-oriented software. It's not for the average user. Right. You have to know your stuff to use this, this software. So, the most important stuff here, I will say, is the log. When you work the software, Logging is what you will do. Yeah. This is what you care about. And, and it, and it, also a CLI. I don't know if you have a, a command line interface built uh, in, but that's super useful too. You want one too. I do, yeah. Yeah. Because then... Uh, for, for automation. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> this is a challenge for me, but... Okay. Because okay. <laughs> we have a programmer on our team. Uh, I can't share too much on, the, on camera, but uh, we use CLIs for a lot of stuff. I will tell you what I'm thinking. This is yeah. the first time that somebody will listen to that on the air. Uh, I have a different application uh -huh. for testing coolers. Okay? okay. So in this application, I have Powernetics connected, yeah. and I measure 
the CPU power consumption because when you measure coolers, you want to know the VAT. You if have you to. Yeah. yeah, if you don't know the CPU VAT, yeah. then you don't have a clue. And I also lock frequency because yeah. you also need yeah. to know 10 months alone is nothing. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I will try at least. I want to tell the processor, I want 200 watt for you. Uh -huh. To keep the load steady. So, so I will use the processor as a dummy load. Yeah. But I need the code for that. D have you figured it out? Because I have. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have you something. have. You have something. <laughs> it's old, but maybe you can reverse engineer it. I will. Yeah. I'll dig it up. Uh, I've learned that Intel has some piece of code there. I might be aware of an Intel piece of code. Yeah. <laughs> And imagine, then every test system yeah. can be a loader, a dummy loader. Yes, we we huge. we have some. It does not. So I have uh, I have an application. I want to say it's X ninety nine or X seventy nine, but I do have it. So maybe you can use that as okay. a, a starting. A this foundation. will be challenging. Yeah, this will be challenging. And the Intel right system. now is learning that we have possession of a lot of things <laughs> that they don't know we have possession of. I didn't know that. It's either. not against the rules for me to have it. OK, yeah. <laughs> oh, public knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found it. Uh, so um, on the software side, yeah, logging obviously is the number one thing we care about as reviewers. Yeah. You need the data. Uh, this isn't worth going into detail, but just some context. You recently were talking about how, and we were in the same position, you had numbers relating to the uh, the burning TV, the high VSOC and things like that. Yeah. Because we log it all, but the problem is like knowing what to look for. But logging is still very important. Uh, what do you have represented on the screen? You know, what are you able to take logs of through the software? Uh, for the moment, I use a free plugin. Okay. Because I didn't get any money out of it yet. Uh. Yeah, I actually <laughs> paid a lot. But at some point, I'm uh, I will invest on buying a plugin. Okay. That will provide like hardware info, something like yeah. that. Yeah. That will provide everything. Yeah, that'd be great. Because so far, uh, the plugin, for example, I have uh, it doesn't show GPU core borders, for example. Yeah. But it's a free plugin. Well, also, if you have a CLI, then the reviewer could script automation to kick them off at the same time. I would say that. Total system power of this 44090 system is 1800 watts. Yeah, this is the total power. Yeah. But the more important thing for people who haven't caught it is the update frequency. Here, the update frequency is kind of slow because it sure. depends on the refresh rate of the monitor. Okay. <laughs> it was the first time that I made an application with 1,000 readings per second from 13 sensors. The amount of data that it produces is huge. In five seconds, you have two megabytes of yeah. data. I guess the, the question I have for you is, you have NVIDIA is like buying your tool and building something to give to reviewers, um, or some reviewers just use like a kilowatt or whatever. Ultimately, one of the issues we were talking about before filming was the knowledge of how to use the tool properly. Yeah. Yeah. where it, it actually becomes, and we talked about this with some of our tool, test tools in the past, it becomes kind of dangerous for a reviewer uh, or any user to have a very precise tool with limited knowledge of how that tool might produce erroneous data if the test setup is incorrect. Yeah. So how do you, you know, it's, what are your thoughts in general on that, reconciling that? At this why I priced it uh, high enough yeah. to avoid everybody buying that. Yes, I could push myself, I could push the factory to produce more and to sell it for example $500. Sure. No, I didn't want that. The first Powernetics, I only sold three or four units, although yeah. a brand came to me and told me I want 100 of them uh -huh. because I couldn't support them. I, prov I have to provide one or two one for support. Right. And I'm the only one in cybernetics knowing of this stuff. Our engineers are occupied uh, testing PSUs right, and stuff. So right. I'm only one person for the moment. And we should, uh, I'll, I'll mention that too. So cybernetics, for those who don't know, there's the 80 plus certification. We have a whole video on this. 80 plus we've described, some of the shortcomings include uh, not testing, <laughs> you're laughing because there are many, <laughs> not testing safety mechanisms and power supplies. There are many others and cybernetics does additional certification yeah. where actually some brands are starting to use it now, which is great. So you start to see a different badge pop up alongside or instead of 80 plus. 
could share use cybernetics on fold of the boxes. No, not awesome. 3D plus, not 3D plus. That's great. No, I'm yeah. glad to hear that because testing things like OCP or other protections, it's important. It's very important, and that's why we saw the gigabyte problems, where it's like 80 plus gold, but it had. Steve, a brand came to us uh, about two weeks ago to certify a PSU. The PSU is crap, was crap. And I mm. told them, I don't want your money. Take it. Yeah. I don't want to put my cybernetics bats on a crappy product. Right. No, I won't do that. I respect. The, the reason I started all that is to protect consumers. Yeah. Because PSUs can be a fire hazard, you know, you know that already. Yeah. Uh, with digital stuff, yeah. so you have to pay attention, and we have an obligation to protect all those who don't know yeah. as much as we do. And that's why, if there's going to be a badge on a product that's supposed to singularly and quickly identify for the audience, hey, this th the buyer, hey, this thing meets some standard. Uh, at least it's tested. It has way more than four measurements. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a separate video on that. Yeah. Since you're an expert on power, with the ASUS board, I'm really curious what your thoughts are. The ASUS board that came out of the show that has a power foot for the GPU, yeah. That's they say it's capable of 600 watts. Did you find that it's a little bit small? It is a little bit small. Yeah, that was my concern too. And I, I also wonder if this affects, I would assume it does, how many PCB layers you need yeah. to adequately carry that power, the current through the board. So I, in general, when you saw that, what, what were your thoughts? Do you think that can become a thing? I like the idea because it allows the PCBs to have much of the cables, meaning lower uh, voltage drops, higher efficiency, mm. uh, better airflow, easier to install. But uh, I want to test it first in my lab. Take thermals, yeah. uh, measure voltage drops on the PC Express slot. On you, this connect on this. If you say all this stuff, they're not going to want to send you one. We don't want the test. No, no, I won't test it. I will just look at it, put in operation. I will look and I it say, is. okay, it's fine. Unbo buy it. Unbox it. Just buy it. Yeah, <laughs> unbox it, peel the plastic, tell everyone yeah. it looks great. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's all you do. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Would definitely do that. Yeah. It, it, it needs testing for sure. But, but it's a nice idea. I like the idea. Yeah. Uh, although I don't believe that other manufacturers will support it. No one will want to admit that the other one had a better, better design. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Although it is a better design. It exactly. seems like it would have to come from PCI SIG or something. Some third party, I guess. Mm, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. So that's the overview of some of the cybernetic stuff. Honestly, I mostly just wanted to have an opportunity to get together properly. Because we did the Gigabyte stuff, and if you're not subscribed to Hardware Busters International, is the English channel, or just Hardware Busters if you want the Greek, Greek channel, then go subscribe. Uh, and thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time.